Every 68 seconds, an American is sexually assaulted, and every nine minutes, the victim is a child. Every nine minutes. Many victims will take years to report the crimes. And now 23 states have made it easier for them changing the statute of limitations on abuse crimes. Now a victim can file a claim decades after being assaulted. The response to these changes, a flood of reports, more than 4,000 cases filed against the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops in just one year. The incidents involving more than 2,700 clergy members nationwide. Only 22 of those allegations involve current cases. Religious organizations not alone here, more than 92,000 survivors filing claims against the Boy Scouts of America in 2020. But now churches and organizations are finding a new shield to hide behind, bankruptcy. It is effectively stopping thousands of sexual abuse cases in their tracks. The Boy Scouts filing for bankruptcy in February of 2020 after being ordered to pay $1.9 billion in settlement deals. And 28 Catholic dioceses across the U.S. taking the same course of action, citing abuse claims. Joining us now is Marcy Hamilton, founder of Child USA, a group that advocates for laws expanding victims' rights. Marcy, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And Marcy, advocates are saying these bankruptcies are undermining these cases. Is this a broken system? And, and in uh, declaring bankruptcy, can these organizations and systems just literally kick the can down the road or avoid paying anything at all? The bankruptcy system is set up perfectly for the institutions to avoid the truth coming out, to avoid discovery in the courts, uh, and to reduce the amount that any victim can get. Uh, it's uncanny how they figured it out. I was actually involved in the Spokane and also uh, the Portland uh, Diocese bankruptcies back in 2003 uh, going forward. And the truth is right now, Congress has got to fix chapter 11 or these victims are just going to be treated as though they are just in it for the money and they don't care about the justice, but they really do. Can you explain how exactly bankruptcy protects churches and organizations from claims? Let's say after the Boy Scouts of America filed for bankruptcy, what happens to the thousands of cases that are pending against them? Immediately, all the lawsuits are stopped. So all of the attempts by each of the individual victims to get the evidence about what happened to them is halted. The next thing that happened is that the Boy Scouts uh, real value is in their councils, in the lands that they own. Uh, they were able to keep those monies outside of the bankruptcy and to say that uh, they didn't have to file for bankruptcy in order to get bankruptcy protection. What that meant is that the victims had three things happening to them. One, they were silenced for years. Two, it's virtually impossible to understand the process when you're the victim because you, you are the center of the universe with your lawsuit, but during bankruptcy, you are in the back row. You are simply waiting. Uh, we've recommended to Congress that they need to stop this automatic stay that stops all the lawsuits automatically for the victims. They need at least a victim's impact statement. Um, but right now, Chapter 11 is all about making the institution whole and then paying the victims pennies on the dollar. I have two more quick questions, uh, starting with, are there any options for these, these victims who are caught up in all of this? If you don't jump into the bankruptcy, it's likely that you're going to be out of settlement. You're not going to have any choices. So they've got to jump in. And what specifically needs to be done so that this loophole is closed and there can be justice for these thousands of victims? So we have recommended three things. One, uh, the third parties who are not in bankruptcy should not be able to be protected by the bankruptcy law. For the Boy Scouts, that means the councils would be in and uh, have to pay. Two, automatic stay goes away and these lawsuits go forward, the victims get the truth. And three, a victim impact statement at the end of the case before the settlement is agreed on. All right, Marcy Hamilton, appreciate your time and appreciate the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.